All right, coming back here with my team, John, Marty, Shelly, we're going to bring Christina Flynn here today as well. We're going to have a big conversation with Shelly Spence, joining us all the way from Reno, Nevada. Shelly gets her ass out of bed with us, a U.S. Army intelligence veteran and a LinkedIn powerhouse. Nation, Shelly is on a mission to help job seekers succeed with tactical, no-nonsense support. She's a mortgage operations executive with deep expertise in credit risk management. She's all about improving the processes and cutting down on those inefficiencies. She's a builder of a growing LinkedIn presence, all while balancing a full-time role at the Agency for Housing and Urban Development. She's the co-creator of an upcoming LinkedIn audio room series focusing on helping new creators crush it, just crush it with best practices. She's also the perfect example of how to pursue goals between nine to five. Got to get her out of here in 40 minutes because she's got to go to her job. And today we're going to dig into the why behind her journey. So today, Business Athlete Nation, John, Marty, and Christina, let's take a quick second to welcome our friend, Shelly Spence, to the lab. How are you? Great. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. What's Good going morning. on, Shelly? Have that. Nice to have you here today. Welcome to the lab. Welcome to the lab. Thank you. So tell us something today. You, you got your ass out of bed this morning at Arena. You're like, I'm excited to join the show. Is there any, so you've been hanging out for the first 18 minutes with us. Is there anything that you're surprised about that you've been listening to on the other side of the, of the speaker that you're now behind the scenes with us? Anything that jumps out? You. Nothing really surprised me, but you all are exactly how you present on the show. So, <laughs> well, this is our this is the ambition. This is the ambition. So, I'll tell you, when Marty and I first found out you were a U.S. Army intelligence veteran, we cracked some jokes on LinkedIn about you. So, tell us about being a U.S. Army intelligence veteran, and what does that mean to Shelly Spence? I was I joined the military when I was very young, just out of high school, seventeen years old. I thought I'd join the world or see the world and meet boys, but it really was the grand adventure. And my role in the military, besides as being a soldier was I was a Morse code collector. So it, and I don't wow. even think they have that job anymore. That was a while ago, but it was a lot of fun. I spent a couple of years in South Korea, a little time in Japan and the rest of the time on the East Coast outside of DC. So it was great. I, I learned a lot. The one thing the military taught me is it, you can train and do just about anything, right? You listen to somebody, you follow the process every day. I never knew I could run eight miles. I never knew that I could shoot. I never knew I could do these a confidence course thing. I, was, I wasn't an athlete when I was a kid. I was in the band. I was a band geek. So that is one thing I learned is you can learn to do almost anything with proper mentorship and training. Yes. Johnny. No, I love that. I love that. Basically, you getting when you step outside your comfort zone, you're going to be blown away with what you can actually do. Most people they, they they've got this one this word that's just rampant across our population, I can't. And all that means is I don't want to try. And when you try, you get outside your comfort zone, amazing. Yeah. We just heard exactly. exactly that. Gina. So cool. I always want to go back to was it just that simple? Like you just wanted to see the world and chase boys? Or what drew you into the military? To me, that's such a commitment that people make. And typically, I'm always just curious about that motivation. Tell me a little bit more about it. My bestie and I, we were out cruising because that's what kids did back then. And we thought we'd just <laughs> go remember. visit the recruiter. And, and, and again, I'm just a baby, right? I'm, I was immature because I was a little young, younger than my peers. And we started just by visiting the recruiter. And then we were able to get into a good program. And in, in the idea of traveling the world, and, and I grew up on a farm in Podunk, California. So the idea of where's Podunk? I gotta know. It's Porterville, California. It's it's halfway okay. between Bakersfield and Fresno, yeah. right? Math, that's a massive farming area. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I grew up on a farm. That farm had been in my family yeah. over a hundred years, right? So an antibiotic. Wow. So in the joking about boys is the tongue in cheek. I wanted the grand adventure. I wasn't ready to settle down and go to school. And my parents, and, and they're super supportive, but they're like, Shell, we're going to put you through school. We're going to pay. I go to community college first here in town. And I just wanted to get out. I was ready to go. And so join the military, get the GI Bill and all that good stuff. But the, the most exciting part, and, and of course the recruiter kind of played it up. They're just salesmen. And so, but, oh, Shell, you're going to be intelligence and you're going to go to all these great places. And I had orders for Hawaii, but I ended up not going. That was sad. But I got to live two years in a foreign country. And the cool thing is about the military and again we're babies 17 18 19 years old right the cool thing is they give you just enough rope to hang yourself but if you spend all your check buying clothes or whatever you still got a place to live you got food to eat and so it was a great it's just very similar to going out to go to college right 
You're hanging out with Keith and Marty, Christina yeah. Flynn, and our guest here this morning, Shelly Spencer, joining us mornings in the lab with uh, Keith and friends. The only morning show to get you guys ass out of bed in the morning. We got some great comment, some great comments coming from the side here. We got Jack Duggan coming in here saying, "Hey, Shelly, your courage to serve is both admirable and inspiring. Thank you for your service. Thank you for that, Jack Duggan." So young is coming in with uh, love that Shelly. That's awesome. And Jack, yes, those shades have made your drip. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate that. And hey, just a reminder, tuning <laughs> in this morning, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the morning in the live channel you'll get content like this delivered to your feed every single morning eight o'clock eastern time is when we go live we like to drop stuff here to help you guys get you guys going greatest when dying this is bs no i don't know about that i think this is actually pretty fun we like to have a lot of fun here in love hanging out with shelly spence here shelly you so you got a nine to five now and you also balance all your linkedin stuff which we're going to get into in a few minutes what uh, what was the reason for pursuing goals beyond the nine to five most of my career i've been in mortgage which is not a nine to five it's nine to seven eight or nine and my former industry imploded and i was very fortunate to get on with hud and that is a regular eight hour job so i start at six o'clock in the morning i'm done at 2 30 and i have what feels like hours to to do something for myself and I, a friend of mine suggested he said shelly you need to get on LinkedIn and establish your presence a little bit. And I got playing around and I, I realized, man, this is great fun. And so that is how it evolved. And, and I see the power that LinkedIn can have for anybody, regardless of where they are in their career, right? It, whether you're looking for a job, you have a great job or you're uh, self-employed, right? LinkedIn, I think is the future of professional professionals. And so I see that, I see it and I'm not sure how it's going to play out for me down the road, but I, I'm running for it. Yeah. Hey, Christina, let's talk a little bit about this idea of being in the band or being an athlete. People listening right now, many of our, many of the people listening right now are the audience, never the athletes. Let's lean into this conversation about Shelly being in the band instead of being the athlete and so forth. Let's talk a little bit about that with Christina and weave Shelly into that. Christina. Yeah, I, I'm just so curious because I think that perspective is one that resonates with a lot of our audience members. I don't think that a lot of people grew up as the star athlete. I don't think that a lot of people were the quarterback. And there's this mentality <laughs> in society. It's like you either are or you are. And I think it's bullshit. You can be an athlete, even if you don't fit into that very narrow definition that we see in high school. So I'd be curious to know, how did you come to own that athletic side of you? You're saying, I'm, I didn't know I could run eight miles. And then I did. Do you identify as an athlete now? I want to talk about that. Oh, I don't, how do I put this? I d identify as somebody that is always working on her fitness, right? And, and I don't execute perfectly. That's one key thing, right? For a lot of my life, I felt like it was all or nothing. And I'm like, oh crap, I missed my Monday workout. This whole week is shot. I'm going to start again next week. And once I abandon that, abandon that all or nothing mindset, and realize it's not a day-to-day -day thing, it's the aggregate of the day-to-day -day thing. So I miss Monday, that's okay, because I still work out Tuesday. And so as far as identifying as an athlete, it, the thing about, it's a lot like the military, the thing about band is you still learn discipline, you still learn teamwork, you practice as a group, you listen to your coach, AKA the, the band director, right? But you still practice, you have to practice your craft at home on your own. It's the same principle. An athlete's got to do all those same things. They got to train with their trainer on their own. They got to listen to the coach and train as a group. So it's the same principles, but it just, there's a different end. John, I saw you nodding there as she was talking. 100%. I think one of the things that people listening to our show have to understand is that sometimes you're identifying with business, maybe not athlete. Here's the thing. As an adult, many people stop identifying with athlete, but you got to remember this. Life is a sport. You are always an athlete, whether you like it or not, because life is going to be putting challenges in front of you. It's just, again, life is a sport. And here's how we look at it. If you're an athlete who's looking to get started in business, you tune into the right show because we're going to help you become a business athlete. If you're a business person who's looking to get yourself sorted out on the athletic side in life, well, you're an athlete too. You come hang out with us in the Business Athlete Performance Lab and we will turn you into a business athlete. Marty, as you're, yes, listening, as you're listening to Shelly tell her story, leaning into being an athlete and, and doing all the things she's doing, what jumps out at you, Christopher Martin? I want to know more because she mentioned the eight miles. She mentioned shooting some guns. I want to know what was that pivotal moment that was like, wow, I'm really here. That maybe changed your mindset or maybe just changed you. And, and, and maybe, I guess, made you into the woman you are today. What was the difficult? It could have been an obstacle, something crazy. Tell a story, get into it a little bit more. Okay. 
I, I have plenty of stories, but I, the one that is most <laughs> more closely related to the military. So I was in basic training and it was New Jersey in the winter. I'm from California. We don't have winters like that out there. So that alone was a big deal, but we had our day on the confidence course. So that's the big rope, the big rope things. And the, you climb over walls and you curl crawl through mud, all this stuff. And, and it was actually a lot of fun. And so I go through the confidence course and, and I kicked ass and, and I was never the most athletic, but I was never at the end either. I was a solid, right? I was dependable. So I, I go through it a couple of times. I hurt my arm. And I, again, 17 years old, remember, Sergeant, I hurt my arm. He said, Spence, I didn't think you were a wimp. And so I thought to myself, you know what? Fuck you. Didn't say that. And I went through it again. And that is when I realized, and I wasn't injured. I just pulled something a little bit, but I was fine. So that is when I realized I can do whatever I want to do. And regardless of the people that might doubt me, there were a lot of people that snickered, Shelly's doing the army. Are you kidding me? And you got to remember, I'm going to tell you my age now. This was when Stripes was big and Private Benjamin. So I got all the, all those jokes. And, but that was my my pivotal moment. You know what? I am fairly badass and I can do this. And I have not perfectly, but I've remembered that day many times over my life and it's helped me in my career, my personal life. And I know how to get through tough shit that I can say. Hey, you're hanging out with Keith, John, C. Marty Fit, Christina Flynn, and our guest Shelly Spencer coming to the bottom of the hour, 8.30 Eastern time. This time of the show, we like to give you guys something to think about to get you guys moving on the fitness side of thing. And we call it the C. Marty Fit Tip. And it sounds exactly like this. Get it, Marty. Go get it, Marty. Yeah, let's do 